Hello everyone, hope you're doing well. In this video, I'm going to show you how we can create service account in Microsoft 365 and how that account can be used in two different or two or with the two different flavors using app password as well as the applic or the account credentials, account password, right? Now the question would be why we need service account and many of you have seen and have experienced where we would uh, use service accounts right and there are different flavors to use service account as well flavors including the mail enabled security group can also be attached or used as a service account in order to integrate different systems together and then make sure those systems are integrated appropriately at the same time it has also the email deliverability capabilities with the mail enabled security group but if in case we don't want that and we want only standard account without email capability. And at the same time, if in case we wanted to provision a, a provision a particular mailbox to that service account, we can go ahead and do that as well, right? So by simply assigning a kind of basic exchange license or something like that, that will also be helping us to get the email capabilities when we wanted that service account to be sending out an email back to different systems and different teams when there are any certain actions that are happening across right so that's the another part of the configuration part on that respective system wherever we are integrating that service account with right now this service account which we are going to create that account would be integrated with different systems in order to communicate that respective service or apis and respective services basically wherever it is going to be used right so let's go ahead and I'm going to show you how we can create it and then how we can uh, make sure that account is used with appropriate credentials and not the credentials which are used for simple communication like logging into mailbox, logging into any office applications like Outlook, Teams, SharePoint or any other applications, right? And this account is going to be used for only for the integration purposes. Right, so let's go ahead and do that. Let me share my screen quickly here and we can start with. All right, here we are on the 365 admin portal and from here also we can create directly account, but when it comes to create or convert that created account as a service account we need to go to or we need to log into that respective account let's say i'm going ahead and create an account from here maybe just i'll create a simple account service account something like this and then i will simply give it a number so that it is going to be unique and I'll just keep the same or let it generate the password for us and let's go ahead and create it. So I'm not going to assign any license. I'll keep it without license and then optional settings and then finish it. So I have a custom domain with and then add it. So now here you can see I have created this account. Right. Similarly, this account is can, can be created from enter ID portal directly. And then I can go ahead and find it here. If in case I wanted to go ahead and make any changes or anything of that sort, and I can <clears throat> work on it. Right. So this is the one of the way or direct way, I would say. And then uh, our account is created. Now let's go ahead and log into this account. And as I have method or multi-factor authentication method enabled on this account across the whole tenant. So definitely it is going to ask me to register it. So I'll simply log into this account. 
So now this is the complete process that I'm showing you where we are, we have created account and then we wanted this account to be used and created as service account, right? And not the uh, standard user account, right? <clears throat> so let's go ahead and do that. So before that, we need to complete this process. Now, even if you wanted to, there is also a question when we are creating service account, we should exclude the multi, multi factor authentication method on that account because if we are allowing, allowing or adding multi factor authentication, then this account may not allow to access certain services during it is integrated or when it needs to authenticate with the respective service. So that is why we have to exclude this respective account from respective conditional access policies wherever it is going to try and ask for authentication again and again, right? So this is also a very important part and we have to do that as well. So I'm going to add this quickly here and it will ask for authentication and it should be good to go. So let it check. All right, I got the code here for five, one, seven, seven. And let's complete the verification. Oh, seems two one seven seven five five two one. Oh, there is something. Okay, let's ask for another code. Okay, zero three. I three zero two. Okay, let's click next and let's verify it. Oh, we ran into problem. Please click back and try again. I think there is something which is not. I have added another email address and let's see. It should send an code on that respective email address instead of there is, seems there is an issue on the. <laughs> All right, I got the code. 1820236 and verify it. Oh, that is strange. Why it is not working then? Get a call or sign in text. There is something is wrong then. It is still. Okay, it seems it is completed, but it did not accept it. Not sure why. So it's good that it is completed. And let's go ahead and log into the application or log into the portal here. And from here, we can go ahead and I'll show you how we can complete this process. So from here, you can see that click on view account and it is going to redirect us to this portal where my account dot microsoft.com page and from here we can either go to my devices or security info majorly we have to go to security info and from there we have to uh, create app password right so once we have that app password created with us then this account is going to be considered and created for service account, right? 
So now this account is going to be created. Okay. It is passkey, not passkey. Email, not email. This is adding additional. Okay, there is one more thing that we need to enforce. Let's go back to the portal here and copy this, close out this one, find this or multi-factor authentication. And from here, we need to enforce the multi-factor authentication on this account. <coughs> So it's disabled, right? And then enable, first we will enable and then we will enforce it. And then it should be all right. So it is enforced. So now let's go back here and we can Check. Yeah, perfect. There you can see that we have a password option available now, right? Earlier it was not showing up, but once we do it enforcement, it is going to allow us to create that one and use it. So now I'm going to give it a name, service account for, okay, it has only 16 characters. So I'll give it a short name, sir ACT, and then let's say, I'll give it a name like HR2, Yes, Salesforce, right? And then next. So this is going to be creating the application with that respective name. And here you can see it has created a password. So this is alphanumeric password. And this password is only given at one point during this creation process, All right. So once we have this password here, we cannot get this password back. And that is why we need to copy it and click on done button. So once we copy it, we can go ahead and keep it in another separate file somewhere so that we can use this password for our future use case, wherever we wanted to use this account and use this account as a service account for integrations, right? And that is why we need to do this one, right? So this is pretty straightforward and easy process to go ahead and create a service account and this service account is going to be very useful and helpful in that situation. Now, this account does not have any license. That is why you don't see any licensed services like Teams, SharePoint Exchange, or the mailbox, right? And OneDrive provision for this, right? As soon as we have that requirement, or if we wanted to assign any specific license, like Exchange Online, wherever it is going to allow us to send and receive emails by using this service account with that respective service wherever we wanted to integrate with, right? And this account is going to be sending out an email, right? So yeah, that is what I wanted to show you and convey through this video, how you can create service account and how you can create the service account majorly with the app password, right? App password is something which is not easy to crack in any situations, in any, uh, scenarios and uh, to manage this kind of service accounts there is a complete life cycle of the service accounts to be uh, keeping them safe and secure across the organization and manage them with the respective app passwords and their respective credentials safely so that those credentials are not exposed over the be it for attackers and uh, no one can access and use it right that is why we wanted to make sure those are safe and secure and that should be protected at, at all the time, right? So, yep, that is how it is going to be.
and you really don't need to use the credentials of this account which i logged in with right so that's the temporary password even we need to keep that password as safe as well right because as soon as the credentials are explored exposed and whoever gets the credentials of that then they would be able to get into the account and they can easily get into this url and do the unwanted things right so that is why we need to make sure the account is secure and in many cases it is not recommended that to use the standard account as a service account instead we should use the um, mail enabled security group and i'm going to create another video to show you how we can do that as well right so yeah that is all for this video i wanted to show you and talk about it and yeah that's all for this video thanks for watching bye for now and yep yeah, also do watch other videos around microsoft 365 sharepoint teams exchange and ID as well as azure and finops so yep yeah, that's all thanks for watching bye for now